name is Suzanne Legrand, and today on We Are All in This Together, I am speaking with Nancy Petragala Dorfman, who is an English teacher in Buenos Aires. I know that the tradition in Buenos Aires is that when you meet somebody, even some somebody for the first time, you often kiss them on the cheek or on both cheeks. Has it been hard for you to change a a behavior that is something that you do naturally all of a sudden? Well, right. Of, of course, it's very, very hard. Um, the truth is that naturally now when we are in quarantine, we just uh, uh, don't have that restriction because unfortunately, you know, you don't have people we can actually greet or hug or, or kiss. But, uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, I think the very first days before the quarantine was declared, uh, when we were thinking that this is, this is what we were, we were heading, and, uh, you know, we already knew that we had to avoid the physical contact and all that. At the very beginning, it was kind of strange. And uh, I, I felt sad because, on the one hand, let's say I wanted to maybe kiss my students, but... Um, but then, uh, of course, um, you know, they already knew that it was better not to. And, and so, well, we, we kept the distance. We kind of laughed about it. But um, we, we started doing it very, very suddenly, um, I would say, because, um, uh, of course, we, we knew about the news uh, in uh, what was going on in Italy and then in Spain and, and, and um, previously in China, too. But uh, I think um, we kind of thought that this was something happening in those places. Uh, and you uh, don't imagine it was something that was going, going to come here as well. And I think, um, you know, very, very quickly we had to, um, you know, stop, uh, uh, make a big effort, uh, stop our impulses, you know, <laughs> and, and, and um, change our, our social behavior very, very drastically. What is it like there in Buenos Aires? Uh, well, of course, this is an unprecedented situation, and, and uh, we are we are very concerned um, about what is going on in the world. Generally speaking, I think most of us are fairly satisfied um, that the president uh, seems to have taken some drastic measures. Uh, pretty soon, relative to uh, you know, you know other situations and the, the way they've been dealt, there are people who still try to find their ways, um, you know, out of it. Um, but most most people, I would say, they they do obey and they do um, isolate uh, at home. Uh, I don't know if you hear. Um, by any chance, there is a clapping now, uh, just to let you know in case this goes uh, uh, through. Um, there's this cheering, and it's connected with something we are doing here at 9 p.m. every every night. Um, everybody in, inside their homes um, clap and cheer as a way of encouraging uh, the health, um, um, the people in, in the health services, you know, the doctors, the nurses, who are uh, giving their all to be there and help and, of course, to do go out and work. Um, and, and they make the greatest effort, perhaps, at this moment in time to um, help, uh, you know, um, the, the patients, um, to the patients in, in the middle of this pandemic. Is that so happening is right now? now? Yes, it's happening right now. I might try opening the window. Well, let's see if you can hear some. So, can you hear something? Yes, it's like a football stadium kind of thing, and uh, everybody's um, in their balconies, or many people are at least, and they are clapping their hands together, cheering. Some people, you know, have horns and they blow the horns. Uh, they make the kind of noise you might hear in, in any kind of recital or football stadium. But we do it as a way of encouraging um, uh, in solidarity to those the most uh, generous people at the moment who are, you know, the doctors and nurses who, uh, like it or not, we do, do you know, go out uh, to work every day and they are perhaps in the most dangerous positions at the moment. What has been the hardest thing about the changes you've had to make? 
of course, uh, I mean, the hardest thing is that the changes you have to make uh, are, are prompted by the fear of, of something that we are not really fully aware of, um, and that we, you know, it's, it's so new. Um, and uh, um, so the, there is the fear of, of the unknown and, and, and the fear of maybe failing to do the right things um, and, and jeopardizing your health or that of your beloved ones. Perhaps the hardest thing is, is um, that this kind of forces you to live one day at a time. Then you are kind of happy to have, you know, gone through another day. And um, then there's the hassle of, um, you know, maybe if you do go out because you actually need groceries or, or something from the pharmacy, you know, taking the, the precaution of maybe taking some some latex gloves with you to have some or or even um you know a piece of cloth uh, soaked in water and bleach and and um remembering to maybe open every single door or touching every single thing that's uh, made of metal especially um you know with that thing to a lot of hassle really and even um you know the, at the risk of of becoming even too um, obsessive. <laughs> For instance, not long ago, uh, I started even, uh, you know, every time I went to a supermarket or grocery, uh, I left my shoes uh, outside the door, so I, I wear different shoes when I go to the street, and then every single package that I bring from the supermarket, I have at home once I get in, before getting every single thing in, I leave it at the porch and then I take one thing at a time and I make sure I disinfect even every single package, you know. <laughs> it's like crazy, perhaps. And I'm not even <laughs> sure if I need to do that, but I do it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I haven't always done it. I've, I've started doing it fairly recently. Mm -hmm. So it's very mm -hmm. easy to become paranoid. It's very easy to become paranoid. But uh, at the same time... Um, on a personal level, I, there are lots of other things I try to do to compensate and to keep a balance. Um, I, 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 you know, take the energy from whatever I, I find it to uh, do nice things, little things that I enjoy doing at home, uh, moments with my son. Um, you know, if I feel I have overdone it a bit, uh, then I'm, I'm sure to crack a joke or a lighten up and, and um, um, you know, relax uh, to compensate for <laughs> all of those other things you have to um, pay attention to to try to uh, watch, you know, your health and, and do the best you can. What do you hope might come out of this situation? Well, the first thing I hope is a vaccine or a way to to treat uh, this virus uh, effectively, uh, so that it doesn't provoke any more cases or or uh, let, uh, you know, uh, deaths, of course. Uh, but from a personal, spiritual, well, I hope it will reverse the balance. I will. I hope it will make us reflect on what. Um, uh, you know, on what uh, we do to our planet. Um, I hope it will put things into perspective. Um, I, I think a situation like this that brings us all together, a very interesting development, uh, at least in the country and at the moment. Of course, health is a priority. But the one thing that, that makes me hopeful in the country and in politics is that at the moment at least, um, we are all, I mean, this has brought us together. Um, we are not, no, no longer thinking of, you know, party politics that much and that kind of thing. It has, in a certain way, taken a second super, third, fourth, I don't know, more superficial level. I mean, it, it's about, it, it's about humanity here. It's a pandemic. It's something affecting all of us. And, and, um, and, and so, I, I really hope it will help us put things in, in, in perspective, remind us of, of what really binds us together, the stuff that we're all made of, and I, I, I would like to see this bring out the best in us.
But I thought of this metaphor, um, a very simple example. Let's say you want to learn a language, okay? And you're studying the language. And then you go to the country where the language is spoken. Will that be good for you? Well, hopefully it will, but it will very much depend on whether you do or do not take an active role in that learning process. So, for instance, you want to learn English, right? You, you teach, um, so you learn English, or you do your courses, and then you have the chance to say to go to England or the States. And maybe you just have a good time, uh, and maybe you have a good time, but you also really pay attention and you look at the words, you look at the new words, you try to understand an advertisement, or, or you try to understand this new expression in people's conversations. If you take an active role, the chances are you will learn. You will learn much more, right? So here, uh, if you just maybe concentrate on your fears and you don't really care and you don't really reflect on what has happened, on what is going on, on the repercussions on you and your family and your friends, well, if you don't really um, actively think about it and make a point of learning something, well, maybe you will not. So my, um, let's say, my hope is that people... I will really think about it and think what it is that they can learn from this. I am Suzanne Legrand, and this is We Are All in This Together. <laughs>